funeral service, I'm like him. When did Mummy die? Last night, before 12 o'clock or after 12 o'clock? On call year round, 24 7 is Taslim Funerals. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, it don't take five hours to dig a grave. The team is responsible for ensuring that Islam's dead are buried, according to Muslim law. What upsets me is when they come in and go, we don't want a white driver. It's no easy job. Literally, we've got exactly one hour to get that body back. Muslims believe their dead should be buried as quickly as possible. No, what you want to bury today? I don't know that you can bury today. We'll have to see. That means Taslims are always under pressure to get the dead six feet under. In Islam, it's customary to lay someone to rest as early as you possibly can because then they believe that the, the spirits at rest and, uh, and those who are pious will start enjoying the kind of heavenly peace that the Almighty has promised them by being pious and being believers. Burying Islam's dead isn't easy for one reason. The UK's legal requirements for dealing with the dead doesn't always move at the fast pace Muslims demand. And, and I know he's going to say he's going to get really upset because he'll want to do it now and he can't do it now. Today's a common occurrence. A family getting frustrated with not being able to bury their loved one who died in a car crash. The pressure to deliver is particularly felt by Taslim's managing director, Gulum. Everybody wants that. And we're used to that. Muslims are. Uh, non other religions aren't here. It's I want it now and I'm before anyone else, OK? Could be today. We've got five. Gulam's daughter and business partner, Muna, has a different way of handling her clients' demands. You see what it's like here. It can be a complete nut house. Everyone's laughing and joking, and then somebody will walk in and go, my mum's dead, and you know, and then they're just, you know, and you literally have to stop smiling, stop laughing, put your chocolates away in the drawer and sit there and go, that's really terrible, and I'm re oh, OK, let me try and help you out here. And then you turn around and go, well, you have to get paperwork, and you have to do this, and you, and you start putting stops in their way. And in their mind, they just sat there and thought, oh, right, mum's dead, we'll just bury today. They don't know. Why, why would they know they have to register a death? Why would they know that there's a load of rules and red tape? I need to get that book from him. Abu, mm -hmm. did you speak to that family? I'm oh, sorry. It's not written in stone that it has to be done immediately, although it's done immediately in most Muslim countries, and a lot of it is done by the families themselves. And therefore, they have no problems. They dig the grave themselves, there's no registration to be done, there's no coroners, there's no undertakers involved, there's no coffin. Usually it's newly owned cemetery space, especially if they come from villages. And it's not a problem, but you know, in, in uh, in the hustle bustle of the Western world, it, 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 it can be, you have to wait three, four, five days. You're all right? Yeah. Yeah? Because you spoke to my sister, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I spoke to you, see, as I said, that, that, you know, Turkish Cypriot Muslim. Yeah. But, um, you know, my mother was English, so I don't really know a lot about the faith. Don't worry, we'll look after you. OK. And basically, um, they're going to give him the ritual washing, which is one that we do before um, we pray and everything yeah. else. It's just a ritual washing. After which, we don't clothe him. Right. We wrap him in white cloth. That, that's what I was Because that was going to be one of your yeah. questions. And then he stays with us here. Um, and for those that are not of the faith, if they want to come to the service here, they are more than welcome. It is really confusing if you don't know what's going on. It's mad. It's Shoes yeah. come flying off. People are running all over the place. Hey, literally, they've been like, yeah. Moon, yeah. So yeah. Your sister's got no one. Yeah. Just remind anyone who's bringing girlfriends and wives. Yeah. Trousers are best, and just long sleeves. And they, you know, if they're going in the mosque, cover their head. If they're not, they don't have to worry. Okay. okay. Thanks, no Thank problem. That's what we're here for. Jim. Taslims is a busy place. 
dealing with over a thousand bodies a year from all over the country. The team is mostly made up of family members. And Jim. Do you feel like a fish out of water? No. No. If someone had said to me many years ago, Jim, you're going to be a Muslim undertaker, I'd have laughed at them. Never. But here I am, nine years. Touch wood, I don't have many complaints. In fact, very few. What complaints it, have you had? But... Well, no, I, I haven't really had no, no complaints as complaints. You do get them. Um, we would like a, a Muslim driver. Or, uh, you know, Gulam would go, well, what's wrong with the driver? He's just driving the car. Do you, you get that? Very rare. How does that make you feel? Oh, how can it make you feel, you know? Ain't me being ignorant, is it? Bye. How can I help, brother? Yes. Yeah, um, it's about my twin brother, Alassan, Alassan D. Um, I spoke to a guy called Abu. OK. And, um, somebody... Abu? Just take a seat. OK. Thanks. This uh, gentleman's here about his twin brother, Alison Dean, Alison spoke to Dean. you. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the details, sir. Alison's details, his name, the details. Yeah, about. basically, I need you to... You're going to register the death, I think, at yes. the registrar's yes. office. Once that. you've registered, they're going to give you a green barrel certificate. OK. If you could fax that to us, inshallah, I'll bring the original All to right, us. Yeah, OK. So, I'll pay you money now, yeah? OK. okay. Inshallah. It's Jim's responsibility to collect Mr. Dean's brother. This is where the journey of Islamic burial starts. Working at the pace Taslims are forced to, things don't always go smoothly. All right, I've come for somebody. Bought in last night. Um, do, do... <laughs> it, I'm sure it's... Dean. I'm sure it is. Where's my main man? What's the LC Nadine, isn't it? Sorry? What's the name? Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Dean. Dean. Uh, uh, L... LC Dean. Uh, yeah, hang on. Do you want me to just quickly... No, just tell me roughly. It's uh, LC and Dean, yeah. Thank you. Well, sounds like two syllables. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Brother, well, which name and address do you want the invoice, sir? Alu Sain. Alu Sain? Yeah. I need to speak to Sulaimani, they need to give us some money as well. Slalikum. Um, brother Yaya's winner here. It's 500. 500, okay. As with all of Islam's dead, Mr. Dean's brother will receive a ritual washing. Sometimes when the people die, they, they go through so much pain. Sometimes they go through so much pain, the, the stuff comes up from the private parts. So, so we have to clean them up, because when we pray, we pray in front of the front of the God. The God is in front of us. So we cannot pray unless it's clean. So we have to ask the situation, we have to clean the body first, and then we have to do the prayers. It's my twin brother. Yes, my twin with twins, yeah. I was suffering from meningitis. I came to this country in um, 1989 and he followed me a couple of years later. And we've been living together since I got divorced, so I'm gonna miss him. I'm really, really, really gonna miss him. Fizzle. Fizzle. Okay. Fizzle, that's what God say, yeah? This is the will of God, Fizzle. And you're leaving me behind, Fizzle. Yeah, Fizzle. Fizzle. Mm -hmm. 
Gesù. I'm still with you, Gesù. No, you're still with me. You're not physically, spiritually, you are. God bless. He just looks so smiling, doesn't he? He's pastor. He's a pastor, you man. Ah. All right. Okay, Lou. Let's go. Yeah. Midday prayers. A short prayer is said for all the dead to be buried today. I don't think this would happen in a normal funeral home where you have uh, actually six funerals going on at the same time. I think the most we've ever done is I think 15 from here at one go. Oh, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right, but it's so quick, it's so quick, no, it's not yeah. bang, it's got to be done. I'll talk to you in a minute, all right? Yeah. Thanks for coming, yeah. It was a mixed race family. My mother was English, so you know it, it, I had to go by what my father's wishes was. So that's what I've done. Is it all a bit new for you? It is. I've mean, never been to mosque in my life. Who's happy, man? Who's happy? Prayers are about to finish now, after which it will seem like chaos and mayhem out there. All the bodies now have to be taken for burial. It can be a confusing time for anyone, particularly those not acquainted with the faith. Well, I've just got to wait and then tell us what I do. I see women coming out, but I don't know if this is it, man. I don't know what's happening. Now, a lot of people actually just view, regardless, they might not be here for a funeral, but they just want to check they don't know him, it's not a neighbour from home, or, oh, yeah, I know him, I used to see him in the Halal Butchers or whatever. So a lot of people just are being nosy. Oh, this is the other one. Okay, that's the other one. That's not our one, that's not our one. Go over this way, Rob. It's not... No, go, 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 go over this way. Give me your hand, please. Can some brothers give me a hand? This is not a Bengali man. What's the name of your last? Not yet, OK. Okay, okay. It's not this one. Don't lift from the hand of the victim underneath. I've come from Bristol to see this man and I was like, he's not Bengali, he's Bosnian, are you sure? No, no, I've come from Bristol and I said, what's his name? I went, no, he's over there. It's like, no one knows where anyone is. I've got it. Go on, I've got it. It looks horrific, I suppose, to someone of another faith where the day and the time is all about them and their family, because here it isn't. But it's just how death is treated in Islam. It's just an everyday part of life and it isn't really personalised. Brothers, welcome all of you here. Thank you for coming today for our brother, to show you love him, show you miss him, and pray for his soul. Brothers, we have to remember that he is not an old man, he is a young man who has gone. And our time may be tonight, tomorrow, next week, next year. Be ready to meet your creator, because we do not believe in death. We only believe in death of the body. We don't believe in the death of the soul. It's the beginning, brothers. And this man now is going to go on. He's gone on another journey. Just like he came from Africa to Great Britain, he's now going on another journey. Because he had a reason to be here. He did that reason, now Allah has taken him. And we can't question that. Blind obedience to Allah, because Allah is our creator, Allah is our maker, and Allah is our taker. So please remember your Islam, the way of life, the way of death, because this is everlasting life, and that's our deep, deep belief. Disposal of a body is a carcass as far as Islam is concerned. The spirit, the character of the person who's died is what's important. We're just putting that person in a hole 
to 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 uh, to stop it from from uh, from smelling, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's going to decompose. And that's why in Saudi Arabia and, and other Muslim countries they reuse the grave again after after four to eight or ten years. The majority of Taslim's funerals are at cemeteries which deal exclusively with Muslims. Jimmy and that lot's gone over to the other cemetery. Jimmy O. Catch ball there. If anybody went over to the other one, because there's another wood going to drive across Oh, the I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. This is the Muslim one, that's the English one. Right. Yeah. Just I'm by the um, army and navy stuff. So, all right, I didn't know. I don't know. What do we have to go in front side? You want us? To... Yeah, okay. Uh, we've got to go around here. It says stand in front of the car, don't stand in front of the car. Muslim cemeteries reflect the belief that relatives should physically take part in the act of burying their loved ones. That doesn't just mean carrying the coffin. If you start to fill in the grave, I mean, what you can do is just use your hands or the shovels. And show that. As you can do your own sort of silence appreciation of his life. Muslims believe that an angel will escort the deceased soul to a resting place to wait for judgment day. That's when you get a face to face with God and find out if you're going to heaven. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've been a good Muslim, the returns in heaven are limitless. I will have 70 women in my life, and I will be like a king. What about your wife? My wife, she, she, I'm not sure about it, because I didn't go through that subject yet. What I know is some people, some scholar says that your wife going to be the leader of the 70 women. Have you discussed this with your wife that's just come over from Bangladesh? The old, old Muslim knows that, um, that, that we will get, when we die, we'll get the heaven. There will be 70. The lowest person will get 70, and the highest person, and God knows what he's going to get. A lot of Muslims who die in Britain don't want to be buried here. The most important thing is your fax for the death certificate so I can get this out of England. If the licence isn't issued in time, then we can't get on that Saturday flight. So Mainly first-generation immigrants, they want to go home. OK, then, thank you. Right, what do you want? Where are you going? To the shop. Almost a fifth of Taslim's work is seeing that these dying wishes become a reality. Hello, I need some help. I've got this poor family who went to funeral directors and asked them to repatriate their loved one and uh, they've just mucked them about horrendously. Um, and early hours of this morning, three o'clock, um, they delivered uh, the deceased to me and asked me to do it. They really want to get on a flight tonight. I'm just turn it. Muna's sister, Habiba, is dealing with this emergency in Taslim's morgue. The lady is a good foot smaller than the coffin. And then you can see the big gaps down the side. It's not a comfortable way to, to, for, for a deceased person to travel. It should be a much smaller coffin. Not that the lady should be snug against it and crammed in, but you should be just, just there. There shouldn't be this large amount of room where the person in there can move about during transit. There's nothing worse than getting to wherever your destination is, taking off the coffin lid and finding your loved one's head, not on the pillow, but right down at the foot of the coffin. It's not right. Well, the we. We had to make our own arrangements, like to cushion our properly. We went there, and you know what he said to us? Call home, get someone to bring some pillows. And we looked at each other. I, do you know what the biggest problem with this country in terms of funeral directing, and it's something that we've spoken to other funeral directors about, is there's no actual board that controls who becomes a funeral director. That's why you hear horror stories of people collecting in halal meat vans from, from hospitals and things like that. Funeral service, Assalamu alaikum. 
Hold up just one second. How how tall is she exactly? Exactly what's the height? This this family have had a nightmare. They think she's five foot two. So if you've got a five foot four, you can sink for me now. As quick as you possibly can. Yeah, five foot four, yeah? Lovely. All right, thank you. Bye. I know it's pushing us on time. Just change the coffin because I don't want you to have any more problems. So what I need you to do is this, Beaver. Mm. They are zinking up for me a five foot four now. I'll be ready in 45 minutes. With Def. A Def and Jay. This is like tonight, eight o'clock tonight. So we need to get the body there by three o'clock. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in my life. A family had called in, you know, a, a lady had passed away, their loved one wanted it buried, it had to be done very quickly, and we're like, yeah, not a problem. And uh, we sent Zion along with just normal stretcher like we usually did, and the hospital staff were quite amazed, they're like, are you here by yourself? And he's like, yeah, of course I am. So like, okay, uh, this lady's about 37 stone. And Zion didn't know what to do, we didn't know what to do. You know, there are people out there that are very, very big, and sometimes, you know, the equipment's not made for that. You look at our stretchers and you think, hmm. If Muna, God forbid, it's going to happen to all of us, you know, she passed, yes, she'd fit on that. Muna would fit on it. Jim, just about, maybe. But any more than Jim, I just think, hmm, needs to be slightly wider. Let's go. Thank you very much. With this coffin, you get an inner lid here, which has a face plate. So that will go in first, and this will be sealed down to that edge with a glue gun, so it's hermostatically sealed. And then this will be placed on top of it and screwed down. As you can see, the lady fits much better in this coffin. It'll be lighter and she'll have a more comfortable journey. I think the family should definitely look to make a complaint. I've told them to collect the coffin and take the coffin back to this supposed gentleman who runs the funeral service out of his electrical shop. It really isn't the right way to do things. We're very anxious as Muslims when we deal with our loved ones that, is, that we, they're dealt with very delicately and they're not hurt in any way, even when we're washing, that's why we don't shave. We don't brush their hair because we wouldn't want to pull the hair out of their head. And then you pop the body in a coffin that's far too big, it's going to be thrashed around. I'm absolutely shocked. Mums, sons, aunts, dads, uncles, cousins. It comes to us all. Today, it's a wife's and daughter's turn. They're burying their husband and father. It sort of happened really quick. I mean, the person passed away, I think it was three o'clock yesterday afternoon. And I just went, we want a funeral tomorrow. 
collected this morning. The family came down and washed at 11 o'clock. And inshallah, the person will be buried at Gardens of Peace today. A lot of people handle death differently, and I just think the Malaysian family that we're dealing with now, I mean, especially with the wife of the deceased, I think they're just much more stronger, I believe, as well. For example, they can come down and arrange a funeral, whereas you would find in the Bangladeshi, Pakistani community, the wives are usually at home. Gardens of Peace is a strict Muslim cemetery, and they don't allow the women to go to the grave site, they allow them to stay in the car park area. The interment of the deceased is a physical thing, it's always the male members of family and also friends that participate in backfilling uh, where women don't. can call the woman come yeah 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 The Prophet, peace be upon him, basically said women shouldn't go to funerals. Now you're saying, well, they can. I'm not saying they can, I say it happens. I try and follow as closely I can the rules of Islam. Sometimes I, I don't because um, I'm not allowed to by the family. And I sometimes wonder whether I'm, I'm sinning. And uh, the Orthodox school will tell you you are. You are encouraging people to do things that are, are un-Islamic, which a prophet wouldn't uh, be happy about, i.e. women going to cemeteries, uh, you know. Even being in the, in, 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 the, in the presence of women with their hair uncovered is wrong for me. There's, there are so many things in, 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 that hits me every day uh, I, I wonder how much I'm going to be punished when, when, when the day of judgment comes along. Dad, can you go around the office and give it a good clean as well? Dad, nice and clean. Haroon, do you get worried when you leave the office? What goes on? Right now, am I worried about what they're doing at back at the office? <laughs> No. Everyone's not eating with Mum's dinner anymore. Your right. poor mother could so spend hours cooking. Oh, Jim, Jim's a, a drama queen. Who's that you going around? Who's that you going around? He's, uh, 
It's a tough job burying Islam's dead, and it doesn't come much tougher than the babies. The majority stillborn or just a few days old. But there's a kind of silver in this grimmest of linings. For Muslims, a dead baby should count itself lucky. It gets to go to heaven. For me, collecting babies is the most, one of the most difficult parts of this. It is, but then as a Muslim, it, you kind of sit there and think, like that, that baby is absolutely gorgeous, and you feel for the parents, but as soon as I look, looked at her and thought how wonderful and beautiful she was, I thought, this is going to sound awful, but how lucky she is, because, uh, you know, if you, you have a belief, she goes straight to Jannah, she goes straight to heaven, uh, no questions asked, because she's an angel as she is, you know, no sins and things. My wife is five months pregnant, no. my wife, and the baby died inside. The, the hospital said they could do it different way, but we don't, we don't have paper like that. We want to do it our way, you know, Muslim way. He would have been a Muslim if he's alive. So are you happy or are you sad? Yeah, I'm happy because, because he's, he's untouched. He's unknown to the world. He's going to the heaven. Take it there. Take it over there. Yeah, wait here a second. Yeah. We'll go and see the brothers in the office. Okay. Sort out all the paperwork and yeah. then they'll come with okay. you, okay? You okay. wait here, yeah? Yeah, wait here. Wait a minute. Okay. Is I'm a Muslim funeral director. I have a driver at the hospital who's been there for a good 45 minutes trying to gain access into your mortuary. Yeah, if someone could just access the mortuary so we can get them out because the family are on my back as well. Not me that the other thing, but I'll try and sort something out. A lot of people are worried. Um, I don't think how to word this. That if they don't cooperate, 
it could be deemed that they're not being politically correct in, and it's someone's religion and culture and things like that. Playing that card annoys me because sometimes um, family use that, or lots of times family use it, not, I would say, not in the correct way, and it gives us a bad name. Do you hate political correctness? It drives me round a twist. Absolutely drives you round a twist, because if you're going to call a spade a spade, and then you go, so, no, no, that's all wrong. How's it all wrong? People can't speak their mind without fear of someone calling them a racist. There used to be a wall, a colour of a wall, called Nigger Brown. It's on all the knitting patterns. Oh, can't have Nigger Brown wall now. Oh, no. How about a little gollywog on the jam? What's racist about that? Who makes racism out of that? Well, Nigger Brown is pretty racist. Yeah, but if that's the colour of the wall, that's the colour of the wall. No, but it's named after yeah, but the I know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but the thing people. is, for years, though, people have been going, hey, OK, all right, so you could call that racist. How about a gollywog on the jam, then? Well, that's you... a derogatory term of black people. No! Gollywog. God, how many... The people you show children had rag dolls, didn't they? Gollywogs. Yeah, but it was used as a derogatory... Oh, was it? Well, if, 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 they, if they think it's derogatory, then, you know, what can I say? So how about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? We're going to have Snow White and the Seven Persons of Restricted Height. Yeah? It's like a blackboard. Can't have a blackboard now, go have a chalkboard. You, but you work at a Muslim funeral parlour, yep. so you've got to have certain sensibilities which are, yeah, but are, I, my, are sympathetic to Muslims. Yeah, but I'm 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 sympathetic to Muslims, and I, I do the best I can. And quite, I've got quite a few people who know me and whatever. But what upsets me is when they come in and go, "We don't want a white driver." Now I've got feelings, yeah. We saw like them giving it all the big, all the large, but that does happen every now and then. Oh, I want a white driver. Islam dictates that death is God's will. It should be accepted. To question it is to show Allah a great deal of disrespect, even in the case of the innocent. My sister, I've been here for 11 years. For 11 years. She is dead. Anybody will get information for D to the police, whatever the little hiding information is, please call his bedroom. Now the mother has gone. And we are thinking about Idris. Idris is 10, just 10 years old. Yeah. Now, whenever he thinks about his mom, he has to sit down and cry. He do not understand what is the cause. Only God knows. On a different theory, now, anybody will get information from me to the police, whatever the thing to the hide and sign of the information is, please call his name through and give the information. Idris's mum, Zainab, was celebrating the birth of a friend's baby at a local community hall when armed robbers raided the venue. Zainab was shot. The family have been waiting to bury her for a number of months. I'm not going to let for make me bury me picking. I ain't me for die in bury me. But this hour for can bury me picking, it's longer. I know if you will Muslim as you bear, you die like to, yesterday, tomorrow, to, today, now for bear. But they all me picking in body, take two more, nearly three months now, I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy at all about that. They've done a post mortem, and the human remains have been frozen. Um, very often, the case is when it's a murder case, especially, they have to allow the defence an opportunity to call for their own private post-mortem. OK, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. You want to do a viewing on Sunday? Sunday, yeah. OK. View. OK, 11 o'clock viewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 11 o'clock will be OK. Mm -hmm. So we're collecting it today a couple of days earlier than I would have done because um, it sounds awful, but we have to allow the human remains to defrost. 
frozen as she is, we can't give her her bath, can't move her arms around and her legs around to like, actually get and make sure we give her a nice good bath. I mean, you've obviously got uh, Moonies and my numbers. If you need anything, just give us a yeah. ring, inshallah. Uh, give me the card, please. I will. Yeah. So this year I can get you? Yeah. I can get Muna. Yes, you can. Okay. Fiero says. It's Friday. Zainab's funeral is just two days away. Can you go and check on my lady, please? Yeah, one second. Let me just see if it all looks like. Okay. If there's no one in there, I just need you to check on Zainab for me now. She's still quite frozen. So, unfortunately, it's a matter of thawing her out. She's still pretty defrosted. Right. Okay. She's defrosting. No, she's defrosting, but she's still um, not completely thawed out. Because I'm saying I don't think we should do the washing until the Sunday morning. I would say so, yeah. Can you lift a limb? No. Then no. I'm going to have to wait till the Sunday morning. Right, I'm going to leave you with things to do now. It's all about intention, what your intention is. There are a lot of times in certain situations where we can't bathe the body because the body's in a bad way, bomb blast victims, people that have died in, in horrific circumstances where you can't bathe them. And then it's actually about a ritual. It's the idea that your intention was to give them a bath and you can do a ritual. But the sin is never the person who's died, it's ours. So if we've done something wrong, I'm the one that's going to get punished. So I'm hoping she defrosts, please. Especially as a game interviewer. Right, Biba, can I leave you to do this wages then, doll? Yeah. Tell Abba to ring me if he has a problem. It's the day of Zainab's funeral. Her husband, Mr. Kagbo, is expecting hundreds of guests, some making the trip from their homeland of Sierra Leone. No, two, two, five. Alaikum salam, Muna. It's Mr. Kagbo. Ah, press, press. Nobody opened the door. OK, find it for me, please. OK. Only five minutes more. OK, OK. Hello? Yeah. How are you? I'm James. OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my relative want to start to read the book. OK, if you give okay. me two seconds. Okay. OK, so I've got something to do. Okay. And then I'll sort of prepare everything for you. OK? OK. okay. Just give yeah, me OK. Yeah, OK. okay. So I'm not in yet. Uh, I haven't seen him. No. Right. Okay. Can you give me two minutes? It's got on loan. It's right now. As far as I'm aware, that this defrosting went OK, because if, they, if it wasn't defrosted, the Islamic washing couldn't have taken place. Yeah, you open it. I'm going to put it Why you? 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 Why you?
Yes, yes. 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 Listen, listen, good. You got for yeah. help, we for accept what did not happen, okay? Because we got for join you one day. Count yourself privileged. Okay. Excuse me. Let me go. People are frightened of death. What's the point of being frightened? You're going to die. You're going to go. Accept it as part of life. And Muslims do accept it as life because we firmly believe in the hereafter and we know there's something else afterwards. But if you don't believe in something afterwards, you're frightened of death because you think it's the full stop. And believe me, it isn't. <laughs> 